Hey gems, and welcome back to my channel, Plentiful Penny. My name is Katherine Morgan, your favorite financial liaison, and I talk about financial literacy, money management, budgeting, and of course, how you can build wealth on my channel. I'm really, really excited um, because today is Thursday. It is book review Thursday. So today I'm going to do a book review on You're Broke Because You Want to Be by Larry Wingnett. I unfortunately lost the cover. It's like a picture of him standing up with his arms folded to the side. Um, and I lost the cover. Um, I don't know where it is, but that's neither here nor there. So I'm going to tell you guys um, about this book. I read this book um, back in 2018. This was one of the few books that I read when I was trying to go on my financial journey. Um, obviously, I still am, but this is like in the very, 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 very beginning, okay? So I found this book in my dad's library, so then I decided to go ahead and purchase it for myself. So um, this book has 200 pages. It is a super, super easy read, okay? Um, the book is split up into three parts. Um, they do eight chapters in total with the book. Um, the And then, of course, with it being 200 pages, I'm just going to kind of give you guys the reasons why I love the book. Like I told you, it is a very easy read. But I do want to read um, a part of the book to you guys that I felt like really... I actually underlined this. Like, I have this underlined in purple with a purple pen. Um, I definitely recommend that you read the introduction. Don't skip over the introduction. It's very easy to, you know, skip the introduction or the prelude of a book, but I would tell you to read the introduction. So this is on page three. Um, so it, basically the subtitle, it says victimhood, a privilege you can no longer afford. So I'm just going to read the things that, a couple things that I underlined at that time back in 2018 when I first read the book. So this is what it says. Stop being a victim. And then it says, you chose to spend your money the way that you did. Your life is a reflection of the choices you have made. If you want a better life, then make better choices. When you do, you'll find that taking credit for your success for your successes feels a lot better than blaming others for your failures. Um, and then it says, if you're desperate to improve your financial situation, then this book is a great place to start. And I 100% totally agree. I do think this is a really good start, especially in the beginning, um, because not everybody starts off with Dave Ramsey, even though he's awesome. But I do definitely recommend that you do read this book. Like I said, it's an easy read. You, I mean, you can get through the book within like a day or two. Because I got through the book in like two or three days myself. And and I was doing other stuff. I was in school at the time. Um, and then, so honestly, the biggest takeaway that I feel like you should take away from this book well, that I got from this book, and I feel like you will too, is that you are the problem. Your habits are the problem. You need to look in the mirror and realize that you have the power to change your financial situation. Um, and what I really love about the book is that he actually gives you small steps, small actionable steps that you can make today to do it. He also gives you real life ways to cut your expenses, especially if you have low income which is really good really that is very very um I feel like I've read a lot of financial books and not a lot of people do that not a lot of people give you actionable steps for you to do um and then lastly in the back of the book and a few times it, um he makes you write out and plan with actionable steps that you can start today that you can do yourself so I do really like that I do enjoy that feature I didn't use that feature um because like I said I'm in school and I'm living with my parents so I don't necessarily have a lot of expenses right I'm nothing like super serious you know um and then a couple more things I do want to leave you uh with another thing that I'm actually going to read one more thing and this is on page 27 I'm reading this to you because I just felt like it was this is something that I feel like everybody should know and that people just need to understand. 
So, um, and this was in chapter one. Uh, chapter one is called Money Matters. So on page 27, this is what he says. The subtitle says, money magnifies everything. And I'm going to repeat that again. Money magnifies everything. Having money is like holding a magnifying glass up to every aspect of your life. If you are a good person who does good things, then you will have only a little. Then you will be a good person who does even more good things when you have a lot. So I feel like that's very profound. And then he also says this. He says, if you are rude, discourteous, arrogant, I'm not going to, he does cuss a lot in this book. He does. <laughs> I'm not going to read that. Um, just, it's a, a hole. Just know what that is. Okay. Um, that is, that is who you are with or without money. Money just makes you more noticeable. So I really, really, really loved that he addressed that in the book because I feel like if you are, if you are a mean person, you're going to be a mean person with money. That's it. If you're a good person and you're a great person and you're sweet and you're lovely, you're going to be a great person with money. That's literally the only difference. Money is a tool. And I love how he breaks down about how like money doesn't bring happiness. Money isn't going to make your problems go away. Money doesn't make your marriage better. Money doesn't make relationships better. Money doesn't buy you friends. I just like the fact that he really explicitly tells you what money is going to do for you. And that is, it's like a magnifying glass. It will only magnify any and everything that you are already doing or how you are as a person. So remember that and that's what I really 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 love I think that was one of the that's another big takeaway one of the most profound things that I read in this book at the time um and then lastly I'm just going to leave you with this quote um like I said he does cuss a lot in the book <laughs> um so definitely read it if you're like 18 and up <laughs> uh, um or if you're okay with uh, cuss words in a financial literacy book but I love his uh, um like raw approach and in your face approach like it's gonna feel like he's attacking you but really he's not attacking you he's just telling you things you don't want to hear and that is why I feel like he's this book was really good as well because he's very like no nonsense like cut to the chase this is the truth uh, you're the problem and you need to fix yourself and that's your problem and I like that I, I I'm he's very direct okay and lastly, the quote that I'm going to leave you with, it says, if you didn't want to be broke, you wouldn't be broke. Right? I know. I read that and I'm like, what? There's a million of excuses that you could come up with um, as to why you have financial problems. But he's basically telling you, like, if you didn't want to be broke, you wouldn't be broke. They're your actions. They're your habits. What are you going to do to change that? So I do absolutely love, love that his approach with how he talks about like financial literacy and money and like how to navigate that. This video is getting a little long. Um, I don't want to bore you guys too much, but thank you guys so much. Remember, there is a $25 giveaway at the end of this month for financial literacy month. Um, and of course, uh, always like, comment, and subscribe. Always shine bright, my beautiful gems. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.